Okay, I think we're ready to get going. So good morning. Good morning for me. Here's Dora. This is back in September. Um, Regatta Point is, as I said, by the Northwest, uh, the Armdale Yacht Club. And so it's, uh, if I turned around, I'd be looking at the Armdale round a bit. Here, looking down and I think uh, somewhere around there, that's the Loyola High Rise at St. Mary's. But, uh, all right, let's get started for today. Hopefully I don't get interrupted. So a few things. Uh, today is supposed to be National Get Up Day. So it's when you fall down, it's how you get up that matters. Uh, I, my best takeaway from this is don't be afraid of failure. We all fail. We learn a lot from failure. Uh, but it's how we respond to failure that's the important thing. Uh, a few things coming up. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I keep promoting the women's volleyball team because in my on-campus class, I've got one of the members of the team in the class. And I uh, don't know of any other student athletes in my class at the moment. But if one of them is in this one and wants me to promote their games, let me know and I'll uh, add them to the list. Um, in terms of workshops, note-taking and listening is coming up next week. I'm not sure. Um, I know lots of people take lots of notes in a lecture, but do you use them and are they the right way? So maybe there's something to be learned from this one. So what else is happening? At the end of next week, a number of you are international students and now some of you are out of the country, but if you're here, there's um, uh, a group in, uh, based at St. Mary's, but involves others across the region that looks at issues to do with economics of immigration, ages, diversity. And uh, they've been very active over the years. They've got a full day workshop going on uh, to do with relationship between international students and filling the skills gap in uh, the Atlantic Canadian labor force. Uh, they've got a couple of speakers coming in from away, from one from Statistics Canada, about some data they've been looking at in terms of the transition, I think, of international students into the workforce. But they have, um, it goes on all day. There are multiple speakers. You can should be able to find this online. And I'm told that they prefer that you register for it. There's no fee. But I'll be there for the day. Uh, sounds interesting. Anyway, um, looking ahead, uh, this is Tuesday, I'm recording this, so discussion three is due tomorrow, talking about averages, and uh, I harp on this because everything seems to be reported about averages, but they don't tell so much of the story. The interesting things are the extremes, the lows and the highs. Your assignment one is due on Friday. I'm doing a tutorial this afternoon, if uh, you're able to catch this. But um, And remember, we still have a quiz on Friday or Saturday. Okay. Um, by the way, the tutorial, if you missed it, uh, the, uh, that, or you will miss it because I haven't had it yet, I'll be recording it and posting the recording in the assignments folder. So last day I introduced you to pivot tables uh, that they're really slick little things, very easy to create and flip around, but they can get very complicated and you'll see it gets more complicated today. So we looked at last time at just how to create one, picking rows and columns, formatting different aspects of it, filtering, deleting or grouping, and reordering, moving categories around for ordinal variables. And I think I ended with a pivot chart. But you've got to be really cautious. There, the summary measures that we get, and this is always the case when you're looking at sample data, is that you're getting estimates. We were looking at estimates of average salary. And we have to be very cautious about reading too much into small differences. And in fact, pretty much all the differences we looked at last time 
that might have looked interesting. Mm. Could have just been noise, just variability. If we collected another data set, those patterns might not be there, or maybe a different pattern we'd see. That it was very noisy data. So that one, it's actually hard to find patterns. But many people, if they were examining that, would think, oh, look at the differences between men and women. Oh, look at the differences between science students and business students. But those differences could have just been noise. And when we're looking for patterns, we subdivide our data into groups and compare groups. And the more you subdivide it, the smaller the groups become. And then the estimates get worse and worse, the accuracy of them, because the sample size gets smaller. If you remember, standard error, which is our measure of precision of an estimate, depends upon how diverse the group is that you're studying. So very diverse groups are hard to analyze. And how much data you've got. The more data you've got, the more accurate your conclusions will be. So what I'm going to look at now is an alternative to histograms and frequency distributions. Well, doing them a different way than what we did before. And then looking at categorical variables more, ones that are just nominal or ordinal. And we'll look at percentages of cases. And we'll use charts quite extensively today. So a frequency distribution um, that, uh, like with categorical variables, we can summarize and say how many fit this and how many fit that. And we did look at counts last day to get a sense of how much data we had in different categories. That with numeric variables, we could create categories by putting them into groups. And then once we've got them in groups, we'd look at which ones are more frequent. We did that before, but it was really clumsy the way we did it. So pivot tables are much better at doing this type of thing. We saw before that we could group values. What happens when you try grouping numbers instead of grouping labels? So we're going to go and look at um, the same data set we last looked at last time. And we'll, this time we'll look at graduates again, or students thinking about graduation, and whether or not they're concerned about finding a job. Okay, so we could just drag that any job concern, and I've relabeled things for us, and you'll find you get a messy sort of thing like this. And they, these are all the different answers students gave, and some of them aren't too helpful, like not sure, don't know, or didn't give us an answer. We'd probably hide those. But if you look at the others, have concerned, neutral, not concerned at all, somewhat unconcerned, very concerned. This is an ordinal variable again. So we should really be sorting it before we analyze it. And also, we should be looking at percentages generally instead of frequencies. It's hard to interpret a number like in the past one. 101, is that a big number, small number? Not really sure that, whereas now somewhat unconcerned is 13%. Oh, it's 13% it's I can get a sense of because I know it's out of 100. So as a rule, that's the way we're going to be dealing with categorical variables when we're counting. We're going to remove unnecessary rows. We're going to sequence those ordinal variables. And we're generally going to look at percentages instead of frequencies. And we get this sort of chart here. A little strange where we get a big spike at not concerned at all. And then the rest are sort of spread out. It's like there are two groups. One group doesn't care. And then everybody else has some level of concern. So you should note as well, those percentages, I just showed them to two digits. Generally, that's as accurate as you need it. Somewhat unconcerned, if it was 14% or 12%, would you care? If it was 10% or 15%, would you care? Probably not. So why show it to 13.318% or whatever the number is? You don't need all those extra digits. Two digits is usually enough. Now let's see what happens when we do it with numeric data. Okay. And so let's get in and look at that live.
so let me try to get out of there we are i gotta get over to excel to hide this there we go so i'm need so this is the stuff i had before these words so i've tab here so this one here i've recoded those numbers for levels of concern in terms of words and let me make it bigger so you can see what i've done so i just used a vlookup and changed uh any job a one became very concerned and a six was not sure and a five was not concerned and so we've recoded all those now i also want a pivot table so let me put that guy in there so here's my pivot table Get this thing out of my way my words down here somewhere and what i'd like to do what I did a minute ago, I'll just show you quickly. I took any job, brought it into rows. I took ID, put it into values. I don't want the sum of the IDs. I could go and right click on this and say summarize value by count. Okay, that I hid values I didn't want. Um, there we go. I move things around. So I could move this one to the top. Move, move it to the beginning. And somewhat unconcerned. Oh, I probably should have done this in a different sequence. Where are we? Move. I'll move it up. Um, I think I'm going to move concern down. And I gotta move neutral up. Move. There we go. So now it's in the right sequence. Okay. And I took this. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna go and show values as percent column total. Okay. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to number format. I'm going to get rid of the decimals. There we go. That's the thing I had before. And I'm going to go way over here. I'm in the analyze tab. I'm going to go to pivot chart. It's going to give me a simple column chart. I'm going to click OK. I like it. And there it is over here. Oops. Excuse me, this is moving jerkily on me. So that's what we just did a minute ago. All right. Now I want to change it. I'm going to take any job, throw it out. I'm going to go down here to salary, drag it in. It's a whole bunch of numbers. Look at those numbers. What are all this? Zero, 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 zero. Let me just quickly show you. That I'm gonna not. I'm gonna take no calculation. See, I got five, one, one, three. These are the number of times these values came up. Five sounds familiar. I remember a whole bunch of zeros we had at the beginning. And so let me get it back to percentages because that's the way we're gonna want our chart to look. Look at the chart. It's all just spiky because of just individual values. That's not what I want. So I'd like to group this. So let's go over here, click on one of these guys, make it into a cross, right click. Okay. What if I go down to group? Instead of grabbing a bunch of values and forming a group, I'm just going to say group. What does it do to me? Ah, I don't know if you can see this. It says starting at zero, ending at 650,000, our biggest number, and going in steps of 100,000. Yeah, I don't want that. I want it to start at, say, 20,000. I want it to go up to 120,000. 
Notice I don't put any commas in here, no comma separator. And let me go in steps of 10,000. What does it do? Boom. Look at that. A histogram. And it took all of the values in my first group. Okay. I said start at 20,000. Well, there are a bunch that were before that. And the blanks as well. And it put them all in made a group. I can hide that if I want to. And the over 120,000, the more group in our histogram before, it made that into a group. And if you don't want them, we could hide them. We could go up to row labels, uncheck the low guys that we don't want to look at, the high values we don't want to look at, and look at everybody else. And there we go. And I could go in and change my chart, and I could give this a new name. This is the uh, distribution of salary expectations. Give it a name. If you want to, we don't really need this total over here and we could remove it if you want to. That uh, we could give names on the horizontal axis. But this one we may not need that. I'm gonna do that with a lot more in a few minutes. So let's go back because this is what I was supposed to be doing. Nope. That's the wrong thing. Here we go. So, whoops, let me make this bigger. There we go. So that's what we had a second ago. And that I went and did, oh, I didn't do grouping. So I'll show you what that one is in a second. But this, I did it just the way I'd done it before. There is a trick that you can use. So I excluded the ones I didn't want, changes, those things. This is what I just had a second ago. Um, and as I said, I could deselect the ones I didn't want. I can give it a new title. And I get this. If you don't like the gaps, I like the gaps. Um, we could do that. I think I showed you how to do that last time. Um, I liked that chart. Well, even with the extreme values there better than this one. So it varies. Okay? Generally, I recommend give all charts titles so you know what they are all about. Tell us what you're, you're describing here, what you want people to look at. And this is the interesting bit, that suppose we want to show arts, business, and science and how they compare. So let me jump back on that again. D, 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 D. In here, hide these, that I could go and look at what programs students are in. I take program, drag it down here, the legend it's called now. It says it doesn't say um, uh, columns and rows anymore because I'm looking at a numeric variable. It talks of axis and legend. So here I've got all of these programs. Okay, I don't want invalid and non applicable. I could go over here and get rid of these column labels, or I could do it in my chart directly. Go here, click on program. I don't want invalid. I don't want not applicable. Click OK. And here's that distribution I wanted before. So I could see here's arts, the blue, over to the left. Then business, the orange, it seems to be a little bit over to the right. And then science in gray, it's further over to the right. So I could, that thing that so complicated to build using histograms is quite different. And in this, that I might change my chart if I'm that say science students have higher salary expectations than arts and business. If I really want to focus particularly on science students, give it a title and give it a title that describes what's happening here. You could also move your title around. Um, 
got to get into format here. This out of my way. Nope. Sign. Uh, okay. Chart title. I don't want it above. I'd like it in the center. I often do it that way because it just, it, before I remember it was squeezing my picture of that histogram and there's now it doesn't squeeze it in the same way. The different things you can do to format things better. So back where we are here. that the member before, uh, I could flip it back. This is just showing what happens if I didn't have relative frequencies, if I didn't put things as percentages, but frequencies, I'd have this other chart where the gray bars for science were really, really low. And you know, that isn't what we want. Generally, we're gonna wanna show that the uh, results as some percentage of some group. And here I wanted to look at the percentage for arts versus the percentage, the percentages for business students versus the percentages for science students. We'll see what I mean with that in, in a minute as we get into a different table. So let's look at level of concern and look at these um, finding any job of art students, business students, science students. So if I have not Done anything fancy. I've just thrown programs into columns. I've hidden the ones that really don't belong here. And that the row labels, they've just been thrown in and uh, Excel will sort them in alphabetical order. Okay, so concern on downwards. That, so I've got to clean that up. So I could clean it up like I did before, putting them, hiding the ones I don't want. I can take the level of concern and sort it from least concern to highest level of concern. And I've got arts, business, and science, and I've got frequency data. And I got 700 students I've got data for. And probably I should put in a chart as well, but this table, what? what's it telling me? Well, we've got problems here. It, it depends upon what you want to look at. So what's your question you're trying to ask? And this is the important thing in formatting a table and it carries over your chart. What are you trying to show? So that, are you looking at, you know, is the concern more for arts or business or um, that you're probably looking at arts. Are, they very concerned or they not concerned at all, or you're looking at science and how they are. So we have different responses we could look at. So here we are with this table. And I could show values as percentage of row. I can look at it percentage of column. I could look at it percentage of the overall, of the grand total out of the 700. If I'm trying to express it as a percentage, it's a percentage of what? Okay. so. Who are you trying to compare? Are you comparing arts to business to science? Are you comparing very concerned to concerned or to neutral? Are you trying to compare both at the same time? Okay. That think of what groups you want to compare. And then the so one variable is what you're grouping on, and the other is is you're looking at the pattern within each group. So the pattern of what? within which groups is the question. Okay. I'm trying to compare arts to business to science. So the pattern in arts to the pattern in business to the pattern in science. So my groups are arts, business, science. They're in columns. So I'm gonna want percentage of column total. And I'll get it looking like this, this is messy, messy, messy. That the, look at all those decimals, too many digits there. I don't like all my columns squished together like this. So I'm gonna put it back to having gaps. I'm gonna put it in a more natural fashion. So let me go and look at this once again in Excel. Behind my controls here. So 
this I was looking at oops, salary out of here. Look at any job down here. Now it still remembers me from before about level of concern. We'd sorted that previously. That I've got percentage of column total, which is really exactly what I want. And let me make this just a bit smaller so I can fit both of these together here. And my title is now all wrong. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, that you see much happening here? There isn't a lot. It, other than this big spike at the beginning, um, that these others look sort of similar. I might have science students are less concerned about finding a job. Because that seems to be the big story at the beginning and they don't seem to be, if I look at concerned and very concerned, they tend to be on the lower end of things. That the, uh, try to describe the pattern. Watch it though, if you recall, that we didn't have a lot of science students. We had a hundred and some. And we split them into five groups. So those groups are pretty small. These, these percentages are based on relatively small amounts of data. We gotta be careful, but let's get back and see what else we wanna show on this. Okay. That, what would happen if we did it percentage of row total, flipped it around? Okay, so I could go back to show values as, I'll do that in a minute. And if I did a percentage of row total, what's it telling me? Okay. This says that 40%, what's the 40% of? It's 40% of those not concerned at all that are in arts. So of the ones that aren't concerned, what program are they studying? Most of them are in arts. Hmm, I thought science were the ones that weren't very concerned but it's the smallest group. Oh, but then I had very few science students. I had lots of art students. So this is just showing me that I have lots of art students <laughs> because if I look down all of these ones, arts is generally the one that has the highest percentage or business, they're very similar. They're both about the same number and we had very few science students. So science comes out small on everything because we didn't have many science students. That's not, that's not telling me anything. It's not my question. I wanted to compare art students to business students to science students. And what's the pattern within those groups? So since those groups are in columns, I want percentage of column total, not row total. It's sometimes tricky to figure out which you want. Okay. So I'm gonna do one that's more complicated. We're gonna look at gender and program, okay? and see what we've got there. And suppose I want to compare something here. So suppose I look at percentage of column total. That What does that tell me? Um, I've highlighted 25% here. What does 25% mean? Well, the total is 100%. So I'm looking at among art students, what percentage are male? One in four is male in arts. Whereas in business, it's mm, just under half of the business students are male. And among the science students, science being the group, uh, about 40% are male. That Remember, I've got an awful lot of female students that that about two thirds of my students are female. So that's probably throwing things off here. Remember that. What does it mean if I, oh, by the way, I could show this in a chart. And I'm not sure if the chart's really telling me anything here. 
except I've got a lot of female students. This one, I've got to be careful in my chart, understanding what the percentage means. This is the percentage of students in arts, or percentage of students in business, percentage of the students in science that are female versus male. That What if I were to flip it around the other way? Okay, let me just look back. Notice here I've got females, males, gender being rows, and I got program being column. Suppose I flip what's in the rows, what's in the column. So notice this chart here has a cluster of values for female, cluster of value for male. Whatever is in the rows becomes the main groups in my chart. Okay. So if I, oops, this one I flipped. Okay. And I flipped it now to percentage of row total. So I'm still looking at the same percentages. I've just flipped the design around. So this is now of art students. What percentage are female? What percentage are male? Business students, female, male, and so on. Same data exactly, but I've just rotated the total or the table amount. Okay. So if you flip the row and column, you may have to flip your percentage from column total to row total or the reverse. In my chart here, now I'm looking at here's arts, mainly female. Here's business. Mm -hmm almost 50-50. Here's science, slightly more female than male. This chart's probably better than the one I had in the previous image of trying to show what's happening in each program. So if the groups I want to compare, if I want to compare the pattern in arts, the pattern in business, the pattern within science of something, maybe I should be putting those groups as rows, and then the characteristic I'm studying in columns. I'm not sure if you're following me. It's sometimes tricky to, to get your head around it. That, so um, this was looking at each program. Okay. Suppose I want to know a different question and said, among females, what percentage of them are studying arts or business or science. So I'd like to compare females to males and see if they like studying the same programs or different programs. It's a very different question than what I had before. The chart I've got right now doesn't answer that. Okay, It's looking at the groups being programs. Suppose my groups are gender. I can flip it around different ways. Um, here I've put the groups being female and male, okay, and what they're studying, arts, business, or science. I'm looking at within the group of females, are most of them in, uh, looks like most of them are in arts, or that's the largest proportion. There are some in business and a small number in science. Okay, and among the males, well, they're more likely to be in business. Some are in arts, though, some are in science. It's a different pattern. So here's the pattern of programs for females. Here's the program for males. It's a different sort of chart that 48% represents among females. What percentage of females are studying arts? It does not tell us what percentage of art students are female. Tricky. Got to watch yourself there. That In interpreting this, it becomes challenging a little bit in trying to understand things. We had a much higher response rate of women than men. And so when looking at, uh, you know, in arts, what percentage were female, or in business, what percentage are, are female, or science, what percentage are female, and we got very high percentages because there's so many women answering the survey and the men weren't answering the survey. 
So it reflects more the gender breakdown of the response to the survey. And it may not reflect the gender breakdown within the university as a whole. That when looking at among females, what programs they're studying, uh, arts and business at the time had similar enrollments that I think business was somewhat higher, but science has generally been much smaller. So there again, you may be seeing variations in attractiveness of program that is separate completely from the issue of, of gender. What was interesting is we did see a very much, uh, particularly when looking at arts versus business, where we had similar total enrollments, those uh, that women were gravitating towards uh, pursuing the arts program and men gravitating towards business program. But if you're, it's tricky that sometimes with things, when we know it's unbalanced, we change weighting. And that is in this data sets beyond our scope that because of that overrepresentation of women in the respondents, not among students generally, that we don't treat each woman as being a one and each male as being one treat each female as being a 0.79, each male being a 1.38. And this adjusts for that problem with the response rate. That's beyond what's in the course. We can get into more complicated things. I could use three variables at once that I could look at gender and program and level of concern about finding a job in your major, for example. And it really splits, it, it makes a very, very busy chart, tricky. It's looking at females versus males. And then among the females, arts, business, and science. And then within the female arts, your level of concern. And in this one, female art students seem to be very, very, very concerned. Oh dear. My phone is going crazy. I think it's one of these public announcement things happening. Okay. That, so we've, uh, we may be able to find some patterns in here, but it's dangerous and it's tricky to read the charts. It's just so busy looking at three things at once that you could have um, flipped it around. There I had clusters of gender and then within gender, I look at program. So if you see on my chart over on the left or table, females and males. So I'll show you in Excel, I've got females or gender first, program second, in my rows box. And this one, I flipped it around and I put program first, gender second, and I get a different chart. It's here's arts, male, female, business, male, female, science, male, female. <laughs> it's <laughs> It's really difficult. It, you have to figure out what's the, why are you doing this? What's the question you're trying to answer? And when you get into three variables, it gets tricky. That why are you looking at how does level of concern change by gender and by program? Why not look at the gender question and concern and look at program question and concern? I know there may be an interaction between program and gender, but it's getting tricky to start thinking about three things at the same time. Often we have trouble doing that. And also look at our sample sizes. Look how small they are. We have very, very little data on many of these different things. So the estimates we're gonna get are probably pretty awful. I'd be very, very cautious. In fact, that these are estimates of percentages instead of estimates of average. And they also have standard errors. And you can express things in terms of standard error of these. And that the standard error, it varies a little bit on depending upon what the percentage is that you're working with. But typically with a, a sample of a thousand, say, your standard error is about one and a half percentage points or 
if you're going to be off by two standard errors, you might be off by 3% either way. So most major surveys are 800 to 1,000 people, and you'll often hear them reported that they're accurate to within about three percentage points. If you drop down to 400 in your sample, then you're probably only accurate to within about five percentage points, again, two standard errors. When I'm getting down to 50, I could easily be off by 10 to 15 percentage points. So instead of something being 20%, maybe it's 30 or 35%, or maybe on the other end, it's only 10% or less. That's a big margin of error. Small samples percentages are very, very inaccurate. You need big samples to get accurate percentages. You have to be very cautious. So pivot tables, they're really slick ways of summarizing frequency data and um, for both categories and for numbers. You have to be careful about scale. So uh, with frequency data, uh, you're counting things, look at percentages. Don't look at frequency counts. Keep the tables as simple as you can. Remove any categories that aren't important. Remove digits that aren't important, like two digits only. Um, group things, possibly, to simplify it. Sequence the categories logically. Um, charts might be more effective than tables at seeing a pattern. I think most people, when looking at patterns, look at a picture and see it. With a chart, with a, with a table, excuse me, you have to think about it harder. The main mistake we make is, are we looking at percentage of row or column total? How do we interpret the percentage? So when you, you may want to pause and say, here's 25%, what is that 25%? Oh, that's that 25% of art students are male. It isn't that 25% of male students are in arts. Which way round is it? That make sure you can define, just pull out one of them and make write down a definition. That'll help remind you that you're comparing the right things. Three variables, it's getting way too confusing. And you'll probably get really small samples. And you're going to get unreliable estimates with that. Next, we're going to look at other types of charts. And the first one we're going to look at is a thing called a box and whisker chart. And it's one to show a numeric variable and show the variability in it, like looking at salary data and showing high, middle, and low in a picture that's less complicated than a histogram. I view them as stick man pictures. You remember stick man or hang man where you've got a round head and a stick for the body and two sticks for the legs and two sticks for the arms. You know it's a person just from that simple stick man. And it's got the key, the important details to it. We're going to do stick man pictures of a data set next time. It's an old technique, uh, well, about 50 years old, but it's become quite popular in recent years. But we'll move on from that. So that's it, I think. And we're going to end the recording now. Bye now.